Hello everyone and welcome to Programming and Access 2013, the advanced course. My name is Steve Bishop and in today's video we're going to be talking about filtering subforms using VBA code. Now in our last video we did a filtering of our subform based upon the uh, combo box, the selection of the combo box, but we were using the special built-in functionality of Access uh, of the link master field and child fields. What we're going to do in this video is actually not utilize this functionality of access, but rather have everything handled by VBA code instead. So essentially what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to tie in the query that fills in the data of our subform, which is this record source. And we're going to need to filter it. We're going to need to change the data or change the record source to filter based upon what's been selected in the employee combo box. And whenever you're talking about filtering your queries or filtering the data within a query, you're talking about altering the where clause or altering the having clause, depending upon whether or not it's an aggregate query. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a copy of the current record source here. So I'm just going to start and copy the whole thing here. and. The time that we, or the moment that we need to change the data that's in this subform is when there's been a change of the employee that's been selected. So we're going to go to the combo box here and we're going to go to the events tab. And the event that we're going to be triggering the change of the data on is going to be this after update. Okay, because after update is after the, uh, the, the combo box has been updated. And the data that gets sent out, the data that gets um, that this combo box, you know, basically uh, has as the value returned is this employee ID. OK, it's the bound column is one. And the first column in the combo box row source is employees dot ID. So this combo box is going to return the ID of the employee that's selected. And we're going to use that value to filter our query inside of this subform. OK, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off here in the combo box, go to our event tab and go to the after update, click on the ellipsis and go to the code builder. And as usual, I do type in the option explicit up there at the top. Now, since we're changing the query, which is text, we need to create a variable that is going to contain that text. So we're going to do dim SQL as string. And let's go ahead and set the value of it equal to the value that we copied, you know, the current uh, query that is set for that subform. And I'm just going to kind of spruce this up a little bit. So I'm going to add some uh, some extra, I'm gonna add a quotation and drop it down a line. OK. And uh, one thing that you might want to consider doing when you're kind of uh, making this go down to the next line is try to find the keywords within the query. So we've got our select statement from there to there. Now at our from statement, we're going to start from there. Uh, we're going to start a new line from there. So drop that one down. So there's our from, and we've got an inner join there and an inner join there. And then here's an on statement. So we'll start with a new line with the on statement. Drop that down a line. And then so there's another on statement. There's our where clause, so we'll drop that to its own line. And we've got an order by statement, so we'll add to that. And that's it. So our query now is a little more legible. Here's our select statement on two lines. Here's our from statement with the on portion, the on keywords for that from statement on those two lines. Then we have our where statement there and our order by there. It just makes things a little easier to be, you know, a little more organized and easier to understand where everything is. OK, so now what we need to do is the string we actually need to set to the row, the record source property of this form. OK, so this record source property of this inter, this form that's set inside of this subform object is what we need to set that SQL query for. And since we're starting at the form active orders, right, our, our, uh, our code here is starting from the main form, the parent form, this one here. So we need to start from there and drill down from there through our subform down to our regular form. So we're going to start with me, 
and the name of the subform object, which was sub active orders. And then we can just reference the form itself. We don't need to give it the name of the form. We can just say form, and that's going to, going to um, uh, direct us to the actual form that's being set in the subform. And then we're going to set the record source equal to the SQL query. Okay. Now, it's not enough that we just set that property equal to the query. We actually need to tell the form to go out and look for the results again. Okay. And the way you do that is with a simple uh, function here. It's sub active orders. Again, we need to draw all the way down to the form itself that's holding this new property or, or holding the record source property. And the method is called requery. And that will actually take this SQL query and requery it and fill in our, uh, our form. So let's go ahead and save that for now. And I'll just show you what it looks like at this point. Let's go ahead and take out the link of master fields and child fields. Let's get rid of that. And as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and clear out the record source that's in here right now. Let's just go ahead and delete everything that's in here. Do, 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 do. Okay. And when we open up the form, we're going to just kind of get this blank nothing right now, right? There's no active orders because we have no employees selected. And this data is not going to be filling in anything right now because we, t we cleared that record source out. We won't be setting the query until we do something to change this employee combo box. So let's go ahead and hit the drop down. Let's select Andrew. And there we go. We get all of the records. Okay. You'll notice this is not filtering right now. So I can select anybody here and we're still going to get all of those same records over and over again. We haven't actually changed our where clause yet to filter based upon the employee yet. So let's go ahead and go back in here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change in the event. Let's go to after update. And now we need to change our where clause to include that one uh, thing where the employee ID is being filtered by whatever has been selected by the combo box. So we're going to go ahead and add an AND statement to our query. So we're saying where this happens, where status ID equals three, or not status ID equals three. And we want to take the employee ID, which is the foreign key of the orders table. OK, this orders ID employee ID. I'm sorry, <laughs> let me say that again. This orders table with employee ID is the foreign key of the orders table, which references which employee is associated with that order. And we're selecting from the combo box the employee, and it's returning back the employee ID that we're wanting to filter the data by. So we're going to go ahead and say orders. We're going to do employee ID equals. And since the employee ID that's getting returned back by this combo box is a numerical value, we don't need to use any special quotation marks or apostrophes. But it is something that we're setting. We're getting the value of that combo box uh, outside of the string, OK? Because you can't just put the, the combo box name inside of the SQL query. You actually have to use the VBA code, uh, You know, have to rely upon the objects of VBA in order to pull that value back. And it's not included within the string. So we have to do an ampersand here to concatenate. And we're going to do me dot CBO employee. And that's going to return back the value of the employee that was selected from the combo box. Now, one thing here just to take note of is that if I were to just leave it like this, that's going to add that employee ID number that's selected. And you'll notice that there's a, a missing space here. So I need to add a space at the end of my statement here, just so that there's a space between this uh, orders employee ID equals and then whatever the value is of the employee ID. And then there's a space after that before it goes to the order by statement. OK, so that's why I need this little uh, space there. I could have put a space right here, and that would have done the same thing. So you can put it in either place. It doesn't really matter. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. 
and just compile it to make sure it's all right and it looks good. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go back here. And again, we've got really nothing here for active orders until I select somebody. Let's go with Jan. Jan doesn't have any active orders associated with her. If I select Andrew, there are his two active orders. And for Nancy, we've got several active orders, okay? Now, some of you may be asking, well, what about when I have no employee in there and we've got a problem? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you in the next video is how to kind of manage uh, some of the interactions that are some of the things that you need to consider about uh, how this, you know, the things that your users can do that could potentially break this process. So let's go ahead and show you that in the next video.